Hey guys, this is Nate Story with Breidegger Tech, and we're gonna talk about the fundamentals of indoor farming. For someone who's never seen an indoor farm before, um, it can take a lot of different, um, a lot of different forms. Um, of course, it started with folks that were growing typically on a single layer, so they're just growing indoors. That's all they were doing. But they weren't necessarily thinking about their growing space as uh, in, in three-dimensional terms. Uh, they were still thinking about it in a very conven conventional sense. However, as the industry has grown, more and more people have started thinking about indoor space as this uh, three-dimensional volume to be utilized for production. So thinking about production in volumetric terms as opposed to just simply square footage. So going from two-dimensional to three-dimensional. And that is a really important leap to make um, in, in the mind of an indoor grower because growing indoors is more expensive in some ways. The goal is to make it less expensive in others. And so as we kind of look at what the future of indoor growing looks like, um, volumes will be the future. So growing within a volume and figuring out how we use that volume most efficiently from a physics perspective, from an airflow perspective, in relationship to the plant and plants and their needs, as well as humans and their needs. These are really all of the things that are gonna shape future forms of indoor growing. And it's something that we think about every single day. So when we talk about growing within a volume, what we're talking about is taking a single plane of production and turning it, uh, are basically stacking those things, right? So um, in traditional indoor growing, volumetric growing, we're talking about taking a plane of production like this and stacking it, right? And just doing this up and down and taking one potential uh, plane of production here and making it three planes or five planes or six planes, something like that. Now, um, there, there are issues with access. Of course, there are issues with this type of model where uh, there are issues with airflow and other things. But essentially, this illustrates kind of the, the, the concept behind conventional indoor growing. Now, kind of the new method that's emerging is vertical plane growing. It's efficient in um, some other ways, and there are videos out there for you if, uh, if you want to check those out that it kind of explain the differences. But the idea here is that we're growing now on vertical planes like this. And um, if we can grow on these types of planes, um, on both sides, so we've got plants on this side, plants sticking off of this side, um, we can essentially double or more the, the useful volume of a given space. And so um, we're just basically thinking about taking this from a single layer to multi-layer production, whether it is in vertical planes or horizontal planes, we're using our three-dimensional space as effectively as possible. So indoor growing is a little bit different from other conventional growing methods. When we grow indoors, our goal is space use efficiency, but from an economics perspective. So it's not just about cramming the most produce into the smallest amount of space, it's about cramming the most produce into the smallest amount of space economically. And that's a really, really important distinction to make because going from a single plane in conventional uh, agriculture to indoor growing where we're growing in multiple planes or growing within a volume, um, it's very, very important that we're always kind of keeping the economics in mind when it comes to setting up these multi-tiered systems or vertical plane systems, uh, making sure that we're thinking about clearly about the, e the economics of the equipment, how much it costs and how much it can produce in the long run and what the market ultimately is going to value our products at. One of the most important aspects of indoor growing, one of the biggest values of it, is the fact that we're growing in a highly controlled environment. Now, a lot of people will look at traditional greenhouse uh, agriculture and they'll say that's controlled environment ag. And that is kind of true. But even in a greenhouse, there are limitations on the amount of control that we can exert on these crops as they're growing, as they're maturing. And so when we move production indoors into a highly intensive three-dimensional indoor production environment, uh, it allows us to exert a lot more control on temperature, on humidity, on the airspeed, on ventilation, on CO2 enrichment, on all of these different things that are maybe just a little more out of control in a greenhouse. Uh, because in a greenhouse, we're relying still on certain natural elements to contribute to our growing uh, facility and to our crops. Whereas indoors, it's all 100% under our control.
And so as we move to higher levels of control and smaller uh, farms, that kind of thing, we can move production closer to the consumer, which delivers value. Moreover, because they're indoors, because it's highly controlled, they have really consistent production, which means their interactions with their customers are highly consistent. And if you know anything about marketing or branding, you know that consistency is the cornerstone of all branding. And so if you're trying to build a brand in the marketplace, you have the opportunity to do that if you can produce consistently throughout the year. That's not something that even greenhouse producers can necessarily do. So the, the big role that, that um, this has to play in the industry is uh, it, it's two part. You have top down, so you have big firms that are trying to grow in huge warehouses and replace field agriculture, and it's really valuable, that's a great effort. And then you have oftentimes what we're trying to do from the bottom up, which is build small a network of small farms, networked people, people that are passionate about selling food into niche markets and to smaller markets, and meeting uh, their customers directly, selling directly to those customers, and meeting consumer demand for specialty items in these markets. And that is a huge, huge huge market overall. Um, if you envision kind of the traditional, uh, the traditional landscape of the produce industry, you kind of have this big general market. The entire demand is out here, right? But the general market distributes really cleanly and really efficiently to this part of the market. When we talk about indoor growing, we're not necessarily talking about this market, although some of the big firms are really, their goal is to sell into this general market. What we're really talking about is the fringes. We're talking about food deserts, places where fresh food hasn't been available before, rural communities. We're talking about uh, places in the city where there aren't grocery stores within walking distance or where produce isn't accessible to people. A lot of those kind of areas exist out here along the fringes. And those are oftentimes the areas that are best served by this type of agriculture because it is hyper-local, because it is distributed. Uh, we can put these types of farms in areas where farms couldn't have existed previously. So uh, in the broad definition of indoor uh, growing, uh, this encompasses greenhouse growers to some extent. There are hundreds and hundreds of farmers out there now. There are, there are hundreds of farmers using our equipment that we manufacture to grow uh, commercially and grow vertically, grow in three-dimensional space in some type of a controlled environment. Uh, as far as just the general overall space, I would say there's probably a dozen to a couple dozen true large-scale um, commercial vertical farms in the United States. Um, probably half of them are uh, folks using our type of equipment. Um, but by and large, there's a lot of different types of equipment that are used all over the world for this. Every different place has unique um, resources that they can leverage. In Japan, it's government subsidies and these old factories that are available. And a lot of tech companies that are looking for the next big thing. In the United States, it's markets that place very high demand, high value on local produce. In um, Southeast Asia, it's safety. In China, it's food safety. Uh, demand from, from the market. So everywhere you go, there's a lot of different techniques. There's a lot of different methods being used, but all of them are, are focused in on consumer demand and what unique resources are available in this particular market. And so as far as what um, it holds for the future, I think that um, ultimately indoor farmer is going to offer, indoor farming will offer a solution to feed people who have never been fed before, at least not good food. And um, when we're talking about food deserts, when we're talking about the far north or these remote communities, I think we're really talking about a need that we know how to meet now. And for me personally, that's very exciting. You know, the idea of being able to feed people in ways that they have not been fed before. And also the idea that this can fundamentally change the economy of food. So fundamentally change the prices we're willing to pay for food, fundamentally change the way that money circulates within the economy, fundamentally change how people uh, how people think of their relationship with their food and the relationship with the people that grow it. And um, this is another exciting thing for me is, is seeing farmers making more money and playing a larger role in their communities, decentralizing food production in a way that's, that's super positive and super profitable for communities and for the farmers that serve those communities. I think, you know, on a deeper level, people are looking for an opportunity to serve their community. There used to be a lot of ways to do this. Um, that were very obvious or just kind of part of our culture or part of our community life. And a lot of those things have kind of fallen by the wayside. I think that a lot of people are looking for an opportunity to connect with other people in their community in a meaningful way and on a meaningful basis. And 
I'm hoping that indoor farming can be that thing for you, for other people in your community, an opportunity for you to grow food that feeds people. It's so fundamental. It's as basic as it gets. Putting food in someone's mouth is about as basic as it gets. Um, but it's also an incredibly powerful human experience. And so uh, my hope is that on a, a more fundamental level, the opportunity to serve your community, to work with other people that care deeply about this, uh, is a deeply emotionally and um, personally rewarding experience for you. So if you're interested in participating in some way, keep all of what I've said in mind. Check out Upstart University. They offer courses on indoor farming, soil farming, you name it, compliance, everything you need to know to start a farm. If you're in the planning stage, check out able.egg. It is a great tool for planning your farm and helping manage its startup. Um, check out our blog. We talk about all of this stuff on a regular basis, and there's some great discussions over there on the blog, on the Facebook uh, group as well. Check these things out and engage. Please engage. It's such a great opportunity for you to offer your unique view and um, your passion and your brilliance to the community as a whole.